that were raised in strict Christian households that will, that will not wear red fingernail polish because they were told that they were a Jezebel or a whore or a prostitute if they do. That's the only reason why I'm addressing it because there are, um, because I do know the mindset of a lot of women when it comes to certain things that they will not wear um, because they're, they've, it's been associated with something negative or derogatory. You know, so for those of you that were raised the way that I was with the red nail polish or the red lipstick, um, hey, bro, don't cuss me out, but you're giving her too much time. Don't tell me, I'm not distracted. Don't tell me I'm giving something that I want to address too much time. What I'm giving it is the fact that there's a lot of women that inbox me in regards to things like this. And this was a perfect opportunity to address it. And I think what happens is, because we don't address things, we do not get clarity on them. So people will say, you know what? Oh, it's low vibration, it's low this, it's low that. But sometimes things do need to be addressed and we're an adult and we can address them and have dialogue about these type of things because so many women are in bondage because they will not wear certain things because of what people have associated, associated them with. Yes, it's a teachable moment. So if you want to wear red fingernail polish, um, I was taught that you don't wear red lipstick. Well, I love a red lipstick. Well, they said, well, prostitutes wear red lipstick. So I couldn't wear red lipsticks growing, red lipstick growing up. So we have to stop not addressing things because, you know, it's, you know, it's wasting time or distraction. No, it's not a distraction. It's a teachable moment. That's all it is. And we have to learn how to have conversations, you know, with, out having to say somebody's mad or that they're upset or their panties in a bunch. Somebody says, all fact, I'm a makeup artist and this is so true. I see it all the time, especially with women that come out of or that are a part of Christianity. They want what my, my aunt did not wear earrings for, for, she still doesn't wear them because she was taught that wearing earrings would not honor God. And earrings have nothing to do with that. Just like white toenail polish doesn't make you a thought. So there's a deprogramming that has to go on. And anytime I have the opportunity to address it because somebody, um, you know, brings it to my attention, I'm going to address it. Grandson, what is it that you need now? Okay, so I need you to go get, get yourself together, go brush your hair, because we're going to drop you off at your mom's house, all right? Okay, go on over there or get your, get your top hat and go on and get on my bed and get yourself together. So somebody says, I was raised like that too. You're telling the truth. Yeah, so I think we have to have these conversations when they present themselves, even if they come at a time where that you might think that it, we shouldn't be addressing it. My aunt wouldn't roll dice playing Monopoly. Yes, I was raised that you don't play cards. Um, that's, that's why I don't know how to play spades. Okay, because I was taught you don't play, you don't do that. You don't go to the movies. You know, you don't play marbles. It said they thought marvel not meant marble not. So you have to ask yourself, you know, is what I'm believing, you know, really in alignment with God consciousness and my relationship with consciousness? You know, this is a conversation. Yes, that's definitely needed. And it just happened to come right now. You know, so we have to understand. This is a part, all a part of the identity switch. You know, I had to learn that wearing nail polish was not bad. You know, somebody says, why? You got to understand a lot of the, the governing rules that women had over them were given by men, even in religion. There's no religious book that I know of that a woman wrote the book of the book of it to, to guide women on what they should and should not do. It's all given by men. You know, even even women being um, being told don't cause a man to sin. So now a woman has to dress from the head to her toe where a man is not taking responsibility for his own loins. So we have to understand where a lot of this suppression of women and what we can and can't do and what is being right stems from men putting those things in position, which is why as of today, we still have 12 men sitting in a room deciding what we can do with our wombs. This couple, this stems from politics to religion. So imagine, you know, 
Even in the Bible, when it says the woman was caught with adultery, well, the man was the married one. Why was why were they not trying to stone him? So we have to understand and really go in and dive deeply into why we believe certain things that we believe. Now, you guys know I do believe in the male, the male, female, the feminine and the masculine dynamic. But I do not believe in control of women and their bodies and how they should um, how how that what they should wear and what they should not wear. I believe you wear what you want to wear based upon how you want to be received and what you feel good of. If you, yeah, you, so you have to understand where a lot of these things came from. So, you know, men did not want to control their penises. So now you have to wear, dress a certain way. That's why when a woman gets sexually violated, the question is, what was she wearing? When I was uh, dealt with molestation growing up, one of the things my mother said, well, you wore short skirts and low skirt, short skirts and low tops. So once again... It, a man not being able to control his sexual urges or his lust was placed upon me. Right? That's not fair. So what it's saying is it's actually a indictment on men because what it's saying is, is that men are dogmatic. Men have no self-discipline. You know, men can't control themselves. So we have to position ourselves to do it for them because they have no self-discipline. And I don't think that's an indictment that men want to have, um, you know, at, and how we view them. Because most women, especially my age and the, women, the generation that came before us, if you were, as they call it, S.A., sexually assaulted or abused, you were the ones that was the fast one. You were the one. What did you do to entice that man? Like he has no type of um, discipline of his own sexual needs and urges. So the burden of responsibility is placed on us, the women. True enough. I do believe that women should dress appropriately for the occasion and how she wants to be treated. You cannot be out here on Instagram with all your ass and everything out talking about, but you know, a guy gonna bless me a with a husband. That, that's not, if you understand the psyche of men that uh, once they decide they wanna get a wife, they don't want that. So it's not that you're dressing for them, you're dressing for the position that you want. I agree, but at the same time, we're responsible for our own safety. Yes, we are, but that's not this, that's not this conversation. We're responsible for our own conversation, our own um, um, safety. But the conversation in this moment is the fact that we have to be responsible for our own um, safety in regards to our own bodies. Although we're individuals, we should not have to walk around and be always on the lookout because we have a vagina, some breasts and some hips. That's something that we should not have to protect ourselves from. We should not have to protect ourselves from someone taking um, sex, their sexual desires from us. Or, or not taking, but more so fulfilling them unwillfully. So once again, even the statement, but we're responsible for our own safety, that right there once again says and is an indictment on men. So... We're programmed. See how this conversation, it turns? You know, see how, see? This is a conversation that needs to be had and we're, we're not having these conversations. Yes, we are puppeteered by patriarchal energy. That's why I stay all 10 toes down on women embracing their femininity because when there is a, when there is a balance, you see the difference. There is no balance because women are walking around in the masculine just like men are. So now when with the balance? Okay. Where's the balance? That's why I ghosts have been going so hard for over well over a decade for us, especially women of color, to embrace their femininity because it brings that balance. It brings the balance. So there, there, there's only so much men can do. You know, put it like this. Have you ever noticed when a man and a woman gets into an argument and a woman goes off like a dude, the man's energy shifts and he starts talking to her like he's talking to another man? 
We have to learn how to use feminine language to get what we want. You don't get, you don't get results from a man not knowing how his psychological makeup works. You do not get what you want. If, and I'm even talking, we can go as far as politics. You do not get what you want from a man going at him in the same way that other men go through, go to go, you know, and get it. Delilah, the government called Delilah in to get Samson in the story of Samson and Delilah. I believe every woman should have her methods, not necessarily her motives. You can use your girl for good or for evil. It all depends on how you want to use it. And then when you understand how a man is wired, there's certain things he just cannot resist when it comes to what how God made a woman. But y'all don't want... To utilize that, you want to go toe to toe and head to head with them in the same way, and you wonder why you're not getting the same result. When you look at the story of Cleopatra and Julius Caesar, she is said to be one of the most educated, one of the most uh, intelligent, smart uh, women that have ever lived, run, running countries and everything else, speaking multiple languages. Her mathematic skills were off the chart, but guess what? She understood how to get to uh, Julius Caesar. She, and, and here's the thing, based upon the pictures that we've seen, she's not considered one of the most beautiful women that have ever walked the earth, you know? Have you seen her on the coins? Somebody said, my kids make me act masculine. No, your kids don't. You make you act masculine because you're supposed to be in control of those kids. Those kids are supposed to um, acquiesce to you, not you to them. They're supposed to walk in the energy that you set. But getting back to um, Cleopatra. When Cleopatra presented herself to Mark Anthony, excuse me, Julius Caesar, she didn't do it in a I'm coming to the table because I could do what you can do. She had herself rolled up in, a, in some carpet. And when they let the carpet out, she rolled out. She became his fun and his fantasy. Did it mean that she did not have um, the intelligence, the wherewithal to run a thing? Okay. It didn't. It just meant she understood the male brain. She understood what men in power need, which is fun, fantasy. Okay, thank you guys so much for the badges. She understood that. And everything was handed over to her. But you guys don't want to be the fun and the fantasy to get what you want. You want to get what you want in the same way men get what they want and you wonder why the country looks royally effed up. Because women... ...don't know their power. And the power is not in. No, 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 It doesn't work that way. But women don't want to accept that. Then you turn around, Julius Caesar dies, and what happens? She gets with Mark Anthony, another power player. And what happened? She got everything that she needed. But she didn't do it in the same way. She didn't do it in the same way. So while y'all out here trying to, well, you know what? We're going to go after the men and we're going to protest and blah, blah, blah. The protest should be if you're going to protest something, if you get what you want. If you want to just really protest, close your legs. Remove your feminine energy from the equation. If you really wanted to make some change. And they cheat on you for the feminine. Who gives a damn? Y'all be worried about a man cheating, but you don't understand. Your ass can cheat too. You can't control a man. And you can't control him. So anybody can cheat on you. That's why so many of you sit around, instead of becoming a wise woman and picking a better man and understanding, you know what? I'm going to do my best to vet this man to see if he has the qualities that I need. But in me vetting him, I totally understand that I cannot control his ass and what he does. He can cheat on you if you're sitting on top of his lap and he decides to cheat. That's what he's going to do. So whether you're feminine or masculine, it doesn't matter because you cannot control it in nobody else. 
I'm not miss. Uh, yeah, they be missing the point. It's like that's because they're hurt and bitter and don't understand. You be the best woman for you first. Your femininity has nothing to do with a man. You can't control nobody. So y'all gonna sit there with a bunch of cats all your damn life and get old and die because you worried about somebody that you cannot control will cheat on you. The question is not if he uh, if he cheats that if that not not he's going to cheat that if he cheats it's up to you to decide what you're going to do. What are you going to do if he cheats? Mine already know that he already know what it is. If you decide to cheat, that's fine. That if I still care about you, it doesn't mean I'm going to leave you if you cheat. But understand, if you are dealing with April Mason, if you decide to cheat for every one you do, I get two. Babe, what you say? If you decide to cheat for every one you get, I get two. The reason being, and I'm going to talk about this on my podcast. Y'all got a podcast coming. The reason being is you are the head of this household. I'm following your lead. So if this is the tone of, that you set for our relationship, my love, then this is what I'm going to follow. I may never do anything, but every time I go to Target, you're going to wonder what and who and if I am doing anything. So if this is not the psychological trauma that you want, keep your penis in your pants and your tongue in your mouth. Any man has have dealt with me knows this. This is not... If, if I've built a life with a man that I love and he goes out and sleeps with another woman and I'm not ready to leave, I'm not going to. But understand, you gave me the same pass. I'm not fixing to leave my good house because you decided to do that. You just gave me permission. Because I am, you want to be the head of the house, then be the head of the house. I'm following you. I'm submitted to you, my love. I'm submitted to your leadership and the direction that you take our family. So if this is what you decided to do, I take that as this is acceptable for our family and our relationship. Doesn't mean that I'm leaving you. If when I built a home and built a life that I love. See, this is what happens when you hang out with the ladies at the, the, the wealthy, rich ladies of uh, Jewish ladies. Uh, um, Arabic ladies and the seasoned wealthy black ladies at the country club. They school you, baby. Yep, we all in agreement. I said, you love when I get my dark feminine bag? Yeah, you know she got it. So if you don't want the trauma of thinking about what I'm the bay, where you at? I'm in Target getting you some draws. Well, when you coming back, I'm gonna be. I'm on my way home. Why? Why you worried? See y'all. See, I'm talking grown women talk right now. This is not for the. Uh, but he cheated. But he's still gonna cheat. And duh, 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 duh. I can't control him. But if I decide to stay with him, that's the agreement. Off the rip. And I've had guys say I can't even date you because of the fact that you even think this way. Well then you might want to think twice before you make a move. I'm not leaving my house. What we built, I'm not. Hmm, my feelings might be hurt and I may get in my, get, get, you know, soak a little bit, but oh, guess what? We got a whole pool boy. The fire department is right up the street and they be looking good in their uniforms. <laughs> with me i match energy because i am a woman that is submitted to her that will submit to her husband and if this is what you say is okay that's what it is now i just gave y'all a little secret that y'all didn't know about miss mason so now there you have it what you mean uh, go back in the room sir I uh, you can stay with me in a little while i'm having grown people conversation now go on back in the room So yeah, that's this is this is a little secret that you guys didn't know about Miss Mason, which is why I tell you you cannot control what a man does. But at the same time, 
I'm going to follow your lead because you can't say you want me to follow your lead in one area and not the other. So you, yeah, you got to send them out when you're having grown full conversation. So, you know, for, and, and every man that has dated me know this. And they don't like it. They don't like it. They're like, what you mean? For everyone. You get... I'm not stressing myself over what you do. Miss <laughs> April, you are dangerous. That I am. You know why? It's because I understand who I am and, and, and I value who I am. I understand that people have um, choices. I understand that. And I understand that I have a choice as well too. And if my man cheated and we built something together and I still love him, I'm probably not going to leave, but he will, He knows before he did that, he already consented to me having two indiscretions if I choose. Yes, leadership comes with responsibility. You cannot want me to follow you, you know, on this end in business, but not follow you with your fidelity. And I may not do anything, but the fact that you gave me permission, my love. So watch where you put your pee pee. Yes, it's called free will. And I've operated like this for a very long time. Somebody said, now I understand what these celebrity wives be on. Um, yes and no. A lot of them, because I've worked with quite a few of them, they're not on the same thing that I'm on. They're, they're not on the, if you get one, I get two. They're not on that. They're more so, I'm staying for the lifestyle. I'm staying for what we've created, but understand in addition to that. If I choose, if you choose to mess up, I get to. Because at the, at the end of the day, I can get with a whole nother man and he can do the same thing because everybody has free will. So if I parked right here and I decided to stay right here in the comfort of the lifestyle that I've cre we've created and you decide to do something stupid, well, you, I'm following you, babe. You said you wanted a submissive wife and I surrender to you and your leadership. I really do surrender to your leadership and you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. And I submit to whatever, everything you do, I'm in agreement with it. And as so much so that I'm gonna do it two times. So I'm just saying, it's, I, 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 but I've heard some guy, oh, April, but that's not fair. No, 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 no. You said you wanted a woman that would submit and I'm her. I believe in being up under the leadership. The feminine needs the masculine leadership. And I so appreciate you for showing me what's possible. So, I'm with you, babe. And I've had one say, no, 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 no. I, but April, you, uh, and now he was on me. Every time I would leave the house, I'm like, no, no. Oh, my love, don't do that. Now, every time you leave, do I call your phone? Okay, do, I don't call your phone. I don't check your phone. I don't go through your email. Well, don't do me like that. While you were doing whatever you were doing, I was not checking for you. So let me go to Whole Foods in peace. I'll bring you something back, okay?